I'm Clint, and welcome to Swatches Livestream 56. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the entries for the Solemn Offering Art Challenge. There will be nine images, which means that we're going to be able to spend a bit more time into these than we normally do. Normally with 30 or so images, we have to just breeze through each one of them. But we're going to dive in a bit deeper this time. So thank you for joining me and taking out some time of your day to, uh, I don't know, go through this little art journey with us. I'm going to just double check the settings, make sure everything looks good on this end. And we're going to cover some announcements before we get into the critiques in order to give people basically a chance to join in live in the chat. And then we will uh, get right into it. I've turned my phone off. I've got my water ready. So I am ready to get into this. Okay. I just got this computer booted up and I actually need to open Photoshop here. So let's talk about a couple of announcements. Uh, number one is if you're new to this channel or if you have not been to one of these episodes in a while, then the art challenge setup is a little bit different than it has been in the past. Uh, I don't know, I've got some error on Photoshop, but it looks like it just needs a moment. Okay. And we're now doing it based on tickets. So we were getting so many entries that I couldn't get through them within three hours, which is just too much. So I limited it to a dozen tickets that I would sell. Uh, no, I, okay. These are the old ones. <laughs> I need to rewrite this. The uh, power went off earlier and I have not got everything back up and going. So, um, all right, if you want more information about swatches, art challenges, want to get your images um, with some feedback from the community, go out to uh, join the challenges. That's not true, that's changed now. <laughs> go out to the Facebook group, which is at swatches.group, and it will link you over to the uh, Facebook group. Artmentor.com is where you can get a one-on-one -on -one video consultation with me. And I have to open the dates of when I'm available. Currently, I'm not available because I am booked for about the next two weeks uh, with several different projects. But once I clear those, I should have some openings and I'll open it back up. But you can keep that in your back pocket if you are interested. So the art challenges are based on tickets that will be available uh, what is that? No, <laughs> computer's trying to run downloads right now. <laughs> Updates on stuff. I don't need that right now. So uh, you cannot get into this challenge right now, but in two weeks when this one wraps up with the finals, we'll be kicking off a new challenge. And if you're interested, then there will be information on where to go out on Gumroad to the Swatches store and buy a ticket, which will allow you to join in the next challenge. Okay, that's old. We don't need that. Uh, Patreon release. So, Patreon is should be processing right now. And the release is scheduled for tomorrow for the video. I want to give it one more video pass. Uh, I want to go through the editing process one more time and listen to it. It's pretty clean. I just, a couple of rough spots. I'll see if I can maybe um, pare it down a little bit, edit it down a little smoother. Uh, then I will... I think I will release the education pages either Sunday or Monday. Uh, those are taking me a little bit longer than I was expecting, but I think I'll put the video out first and then those in the 20 tier and the 40 tier, uh, you will get another message a day or two later with the exercise pages. So just letting you know that. Uh, Matt says, hey, won't stay long. It's 1 a.m. Didn't get enough time to do it all. The prep required for the wildcard template, but I have made a start on my version in the Solemn Offering. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry it's late. I had some other things to get to today. But, yeah. Uh, also, this one shouldn't be as long with not as many um, injuries. And, oh, uh, just a quick shout-out to... Anna, a patron, 
I have not forgotten about your feedback video. I was actually working on that today and I'm putting a bit more time into it because of the answer to the question and trying to figure out how to explain that. And it's also one that I might put up on the uh, YouTube channel because it's something that a lot of people deal with, trying to get a certain level of realism. And so anyway, just letting you know that before I forgot. But we've got people in here, chat's obviously working, and looks like a good time to get into it. Let's close that, don't save. Oh, Andy. Andy, I am using a little snippet of your image on the cover for this video with um, your name down in the description saying that it was your image. So if that's not okay with you, let me know. I'll swap it out for something else, but that's what I grabbed. It looked pretty good in the little thumbnail there. All right, just going through alphabetically... I have gone through these and all but one I have already written out notes and some of them I did some little sketches on some of them I grabbed some supporting uh, images for so it just depends on what I was talking about on each one but this will help make it faster and also gave me time to actually look over it first this one first is by Andy Zayamov. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But, okay. Oh, also, if you're new to the challenge, let me give you a quick rundown of what they're trying to do here. This was the outline for the challenge. It really doesn't like me trying to change the size of that. Don't know why. There we go. So it is called Solemn Offering. This is a classic painting style illustration, not concept art, not character design, that sort of thing. This will be a full illustration, properly rendered in a more realistic fashion. This is a scene about a fateful meeting between two characters in this vertical image. It should be 2200 by 3000 pixels. Uh, depict the back of a foreground character giving an offering to the matron of the woods who is a triad queen who is in front of them the environment should be a throne area of sorts which is all nature with beautiful lighting perhaps the inside of a large hollow tree with light filtering down the matron is feminine in appearance but not completely human she is made from tree materials she should be regal and caring Additional smaller dryads and nature spirits may be seen in the area around. The offering character and their offering is up to you. You can pick what they're offering, who they are. And you needed to follow the provided PSD template. I think chat stopped working on me there because usually I get more comments than that. There we go. Okay. If you guys do have comments during this live stream, then feel free to put it down there in the, obviously, the, the comment section. And I will try to address it during the video. Uh, certainly, if you're one of the artists that I am reviewing your image and you want uh, to throw me a question or a comment, then this is a great time to do it. All right. So that's what it was. And so let's talk through Andy's piece here. The template, just so you know, for everybody is set up the same way. Obviously, the main image. Up here, they were to do three composition studies. They could be pretty rough. You know, didn't need any detail shading, just composition studies. Uh, here is lighting reference. Here is artwork reference for style, kind of the direction of what they're wanting. And then pose reference to, for the two main characters. Over here is value studies, uh, then color studies, uh, then references for the nature elements around the scene. And then they also have the opportunity to put in comments or questions down in the box in the bottom left. 
Uh, Veronica says, first time catching the stream. First time participating in the challenge. Keen to see everyone's illustration concepts. Well, Veronica, thank you for joining. And uh, yeah, we'll get to your piece in a little bit, but it's good to have you join in. Okay, now that everybody knows what they're looking at and how this is uh, put together. Number one, I will say that your concepts are good with their direction and that you're trying very different layouts inside of the same uh, criteria of the brief. So you haven't changed the brief and what the image is about, but you have really changed around how the whole scene is laid out and what the composition is. So that's good. Now, what would be best is if we could get this. Uh, obviously, this is the one that you decided to go with. And this is something that actually applies to a number of the images uh, offhand. I don't remember who all, but I'll have to mention it when I get there. And that is, okay, you did your variations. Good. And then what you should do is get this one and then do three more versions of that one and then pick that one and then maybe consider going with that one. I just said that a lot, but take it through another level or two more levels of revisions before you choose it and start working it up. And maybe you did that, but this has some compositional issues. And I think that those might be, uh, those could have been avoided or you could have handled them better if you had uh, went through more revision times with it, iterations. Uh, number two, uh, number one, yeah, variations. Uh, I would have liked to have seen, hopefully that you had gone through more variations with this one. Number two is the composition. This is one of the issues with the composition here is that, oh, notes, turn off the notes. I need to mark this one. Okay, so an issue with this one is that the piece is really divided, I mean, vertically in half. There is a, almost a very clean line between all of the elements down here and all of the elements up here. And this is making the piece very non-cohesive. Uh, it's almost as if you could just cut the image. You could crop the image like this and you would have one image. And you could crop the image like this and you'd have a completely different image. And the two don't have enough going on with each other to make it one cohesive image. Also looking at the amount of space that is being utilized and is it being utilized well. There are some times in some images the, the empty space becomes a tool. You need it in order to tell a story. Like maybe you have a, a scene. Where is my mouse there? Maybe you have a scene of you know, a desert and the sky being lost in the desert. And um, you just have his one little figure right there. And then you have these massive sand dunes just stretching back into the distance. Okay, yes, you actually want a lot of empty space because it intensifies the feeling of isolation. But that's not something we necessarily want here. Uh, let's try to fill more of the frame with your subjects and see if we can find some better shapes for the overall composition. Uh, now this one, it, it's really close. I think you might have made some edits, not very many. But okay, so that's that. Uh, number three. Okay, over here we have, now I will get into doing, uh, showing a little it's not a paint over, it's kind of a mashup of where I think a direction might be, but we'll step into that. Let's, let's talk about this first. Uh, number three, on the colors, this is, it's not quite what I had in mind as far as color studies. 
what you've done is you've gone in and you've changed around the colors of the different characters, but you haven't really changed the color scheme. You haven't uh, experimented with different color palettes or color schemes. And I think that you are missing out on some opportunities there. There's some things that you ought to be trying at that stage that you aren't yet. So uh, let's go over to uh, references, ideas, no. So here is, uh, it's from my ebook on colors, but color palettes and color schemes can come in a lot of different um, varieties. Now these are color schemes. A scheme, the difference between a scheme and a palette, and I don't even always say it correctly, but a scheme is the, uh, it is not the specific colors, it is how the colors relate to each other. Uh, someone says, what did I miss? You haven't really missed anything. I went through some uh, announcements, and then we just started talking about the first image. And I was just saying that the color scheme, now this is a color scheme. It is an analogous color scheme. And it is analogous because all of the colors are similar, they're neighboring colors on the color wheel. Now this could also be a color palette if you're using those exact colors. All right, that is a color palette. This is a yellow, orange, red color palette. But it happens to be an analogous color scheme. Uh, Analogous color scheme could also be all these cool colors on the opposite side. Uh, then that would be a still analogous color scheme, but it would be a blue color palette. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But what I would like to see is you trying maybe three different versions of these or three different ones of these. Probably not monochromatic. You need more colors than just the one. So try one that's analogous where it's all similar colors. Now that's pretty much what you have here. Uh, these are all very family green colors and nothing's really getting out of that. And that's fine. And you might even expand that out a little bit. We could probably get a bit more color. Or consider perhaps a split complementary where it is based around the green colors with also an, an opposing color on the other side, which would be more of a you know reddish uh, tone. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can play around with something like that and see if you like having an accent color that's a little different. Or if you want opposing colors, then you get something more like just a regular complementary, which case it would be, if you're picking green as your main one, then green and red, because those are opposites. Uh, where can I get this color scheme chart? Uh, well, this and 20 other pages of good color information is available on swatchesart.com. It is my Understanding Mood Colors ebook. Uh, I put a lot of time into that, and there's some good information in there, so check that out. I think it runs, I think it's $12, something on that line. So there we go. Uh, so just, I'm not saying that you have to go back and do that. I don't, we're, we're moving forwards with the image. So we'll just go ahead and move forwards and say we're using this analogous color scheme. But just keep that in mind as you're going forwards with new projects or if you take on another art challenge. Okay, next up, number four. Uh, number four is where this, the values are really starting to break down. Now the values make sense here and they stand out pretty well, but the values are really doling down once you get to this version of it. And let's take a look. Boom. Uh, this is just the black and white version. And you see how grayed out this is? It's really, there's, there's, no, there's no distinction hardly between the different elements. Everything sits within the same gray value range. And you can even see on your studies, you had a lot more pop to the values than you do on this version. What we need to do is it bring at least this much back into the image. Now let's say if we even took the details out, so I just ran a uh, surface blur on it. So similar values got, you know, washed out with their details. And that, I mean, unless it's big and I'm 
really making effort, you wouldn't be able to tell what's going on. You can kind of pick her out, and I'm going to give you a thumbs up on that. She's working quite well. She stands out for being darker and for being lighter. She's got a nice silhouette. She's got a good regal pose to her, so that's working well. And even that's working pretty well, too, that section here. But this needs some rework. So how could we go about that? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I'll talk about five and six in, in a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, let's talk about five and six, and then we'll get into the little rework. Okay, so five is, it looks like they are bringing this uh, other dryad lady to the dryad queen for whatever reason, and that's fine. They're presenting her to the, the queen. But she's, she's getting too bendy. She's getting to where she looks more smoke-like or rubbery than wood like and i know you're trying to get maybe a, a twisty bonsai tree sort of thing going on but i think we need to dial that back some and try to find something that feels a bit more tree like and not so wet noodle uh yeah okay um, these poses are actually working pretty good that's something a lot of people don't account for is the weight and that they're really pulling off to the side. So that's a good call, and I like that. And, and these are all animals, uh, like the lion characters. That's pretty cool. So, uh, five. Yeah, I was just saying, like, this is getting too wavy. No, that's, that's what I'm saying here. So, okay, let's move this out of the way. This probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but let me try to talk through. If you are throwing a comment at me in the live chat, make sure you're putting swatches at the beginning of your comment so it will flag it. I see a lot of people talking, but I'm not going to stop and read them all unless uh, it has swatches flagged. I just, because I don't know who's talking to who, I'm not going to try to read everything. Okay, so this is sort of what I'm thinking here. And let's start by... Picking the dark gray here. Just trying to let that yellow stand out a little bit. There we go. My yellow lines. So this is what I'm seeing is there's not enough overlap between foreground and background. And we also want to make better use of the overall shapes. So, oh yeah, let me mark that first. Brain's all scattered. I've been jumping around too many projects today. So we've got a lot of pretty much unutilized space. That's not doing much. I know you got these little people in the background and that's fine, but I would rather have more of the queen and what's going on with them than so much uh, given to the background. Also, like that's really not doing much, all of this. Uh, we don't need much of this information to know what's going on. So again, can we make better use of the space? And I'm not saying we have to just fill everything, everything, but let's see if we can get a little bit more. Neon says, a long time no see. I used to participate a year ago, but my computer exploded. That's terrible. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Are these still open to everyone to join? Uh, yes and no. They are open to anyone who wants to purchase a ticket. And then if you have a ticket, then you can join. So are they open to everyone? Potentially, uh, whoever wants to do that. Uh, I did put it to a limited number of tickets because we were just getting too many to do. And yeah, I, I was having to set aside about four to four and a half hours a day uh, on the stream days. So uh, it was a decent amount of time put into it. Uh, do you have any plans for the next Patreon reward, Clint? Uh, Mamet asked. Well, the the one that's coming out uh, in the next couple of days is the painting process guide. It's a video. It'll be clocking in about an hour and a half. And it'll be 10 steps the painting of what to do at each stage. It actually talks about a lot of stuff going on in, in this particular challenge and the way this is laid out. 
and I'm pointing as if you have any idea of what I'm pointing at. And, but the one after that, I have a couple of ideas. I think I'll throw it up as a Patreon poll. Uh, some of the ideas, one is how to improve your image. It's basically the same sort of things, uh, criteria that I go through when I critique images here on stream. I just kind of have this list in the back of my mind of check this, check this, check this, and if that, then this. And it's just a quick kind of cheat sheet of what some of the common mistakes are and what the solutions to those mistakes would be. So that's one. Another one is materials. It started, but it's an ebook, and ebooks take four times longer to do than videos. So I don't know if I'll have that one done in time, so we'll see. But good, good, good question. Thanks for asking. So here, what I'm thinking is, if this guy was made bigger, so he's closer to the camera, or actually the camera is like down a little bit, or he's up a little bit, that we can have him, the main character, taking up a bit more space, right? She could be a little bigger. So she's gonna be taking up More like that and then we can have these guys so we have kind of a triangle whoop, between her and then the king and then this lady and she doesn't move much just maybe up a little bit and we don't need so much of that other guy we just need a little bit of him because if we see this guy will make sense of what's going on so those can be a little bigger and then we can try to do something a bit more dynamic with the bridge. And the bridge can be coming up and over. I'm, I'm taking it that's a bridge. And then maybe we can see underneath it back there. And this tree, maybe we can get a bit more of that tree coming down because those are some really nice shapes and color. So that's really rough, but there we go. Uh, it would be something like this, right? See how that works? So I just got copied and pasted around. So we have her bigger and in charge up here on top. She's cresting over the top of this. Uh, we've got the king here. We've got some of the beautiful backlit, um, was it a weeping willow? Yeah, looks like a weeping willow, which is lovely. I, I love the idea of backlighting a weeping willow. I think that's great. Uh, I also want to say that this is one of the best iterations of the drag queen, I think, in the whole lot that was submitted. So I really don't anticipate needing her to be changed. She's really lovely. So yeah, just you might want to add a bit more detail into her since we're making her a little bit bigger, but I don't even know if you need to. Um, it's really quite, quite good. Now I would say that you probably put too much detail into this at this stage at a, a concept submission because we're going to be moving things around a lot right now. And, you know, you're probably wasted some time. But if that's okay with you, then it's okay with me. Uh, is this still part of those monthly art challenges with random subjects? Do you still do those? Are those open still? Uh, okay, looks like somebody's getting you some answers on that. I'll let them answer you. Okay, uh, so value-wise, we need to make some changes. Like, if we put a nice light on him... And she has nice light on her then we probably also want to put some light on her so that the three main characters get light uh, then these guys can basically be more silhouetted into shadow so there you go uh, that hopefully you will find useful i think you have probably the best dryad of the lot uh, you've got the nice bridge i think that's fantastic i would keep that and instead of doing so much of each one, like instead of so many trees, let's have one major tree. And instead of seeing a long bridge, let's maybe a smaller bridge where we get to feature it a little bit better. So there we go. Uh, I don't think you really asked a question. You, know, really, uh, you found the ebooks helpful. That's awesome. Thank you for picking them up. Glad you found them useful. Uh, also, a good pose reference. Um, good ideas on those. I think it works really well. <clears throat> oh. 
All right, this one up is Anna Rem Remtke. Yeah, Anna, I was the one talking, I was talking to you earlier about your submitted image on the uh, Patreon. Okay, so we've got six points to cover on hers. We don't have a big pain over here. We're going to just talk through most of this. So number one, good variations. I like this. Uh, you again, some of you have very similar ones. Uh, it's not like you didn't try to do very many changes, uh, but Anna did, so I like that. These are all curious. Uh, they all work actually. <laughs> that this has the classic target composition with a centered composition and utilizing a triangle as well. So that one works exceedingly well that way. This one composition doesn't work as well, but the idea of her being really big, she's kind of a giant creature, uh, is clever. And I think if utilized a little differently, composed a little differently, the really large size of the creature could work very well and i like that idea but you're running with this one which has all the full potential that you need but let's talk about some things holding it back uh number two is all right these were supposed to be value studies these just need to be in black and white there doesn't need to be any color on these uh i'm thinking maybe you neglected to do them or you went back and tried to do them afterwards i don't know but next time I would like to see proper just black and white because that's what I'm trying to get you to do. I'm trying to make you think about how the values are working without regard to the color. The values alone, just the black and white and light and darkness of it should be able to hold up on its own without color. But uh, we don't have that, so we're just moving on. Uh, that the basic idea of the value system, I think, works, having them dark, having the darker tree with her lighter in it. But it all starts kind of falling apart here. Now, you do say, because you're, you're getting on the same point, I'm struggling a lot with the correct lighting so that the focal point is well lit and is still realistic and not making my values messy and or muddy. I think a lot of that goes back to the fact that you didn't really do proper value studies in order to work that out before you went into your colors. Uh, now you did try some different proper color schemes, at least color palettes, going with much warmer uh, with some greens and then more of a brown tone and then green tone. So that's uh, some options. I think yours is probably better uh, because it has a wider palette and I think that works well for this. Number four, this is a cool tree. I like that. That's fine. Uh, and have some references for the little waterfall and stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, one of the issues here is you've gone too verbatim, too copying of the tree. In that these, it looks like you just copied the shapes. And that's not really the shapes that you need. So you really see that here with this loop. Now, it's not painted in a way that I know that that branch is going behind the other branch. And so what you need to do is look at this and see about what makes that tree have character. What sort of shapes and, and forms does it have? What sort of textures does it have? How does it light? And then apply that to the proper shapes that you want here. Because this isn't really an interesting shape for a tree. Uh, if it was, you know, if she set sideways on it because the tree had this cool little, you know, seat that was in it. So that's how you have to sit on that throne. And then that's kind of cool. And then there would be, you know, this twist back to it where the main tree goes off this way. And these could be the main branches, right? And then maybe we don't even need that branch. Maybe we could just have another branch coming off over there and then it has these branches that all kind of come down and you see that on bonsai trees where like a branch will come up and then it dips down lower again and so like this would be a more interesting 
flow to the tree than what you have. So spend some time thinking about that and see how you can work that up to be more dynamic, to work with your uh, fantastical version of this. And okay, next up, uh, composition. So here is where we need to make, again, kind of better use of the space. These guys are kind of secondary. Uh, and the midground isn't really doing anything. So we need to start tying things together. One of the things that I talk about actually in the painting process video and in the composition guide is be careful of aligning too many things in the scene at flat, flat to the view. All right, so we're looking this way into the scene and all of these things are completely horizontal to our viewpoint. And it makes the scene have no flow. It stops the visual flow. And sometimes that's what you want, but most of the time it's not, and that's not what we want here. So we need to find a way in order to try to keep more of a visual flow. You were making a good decision in order to offset these guys. That's probably good. Unless you can create flow in the image and then have them stationary and then they offset okay. Uh, we could think about making these guys bigger so that we have more emotional connection to them. They're larger. Uh, we could just try that by grabbing these. I also think these poses that you found here and the way that you have them arranged, uh, they read very well. And so that that's a good direction for them. That's not what I meant. Now all of a sudden he is overlapping some of those horizontals and the flow isn't stopping as much. So maybe we offset him over here just a little bit. Yep. See there we were having his head running right into that line and yeah, might as well just break that line. Oops, wrong letter. And how else could we do it? Well, we could have the water not cutting exactly across. Uh, we could also have some nice, big, lovely roots from this thing coming down, right? We could have some roots breaking up and through this. And that can be a continuing element. And you could have the water coming down here. And the water doesn't have to have one level. It can still be cascading. So you have a rock and the water's coming down to that rock and it splits and it's continually to have like little different falls as it can falls down through there. Maybe there's another bit of water that comes through this area. So you're trying to make multiple planes, right? Not just flat plane, flat plane, but allow it to cascade down and it's gonna break up and there's some little bits of water or then there's a little rock as it goes through that way. Uh, then the stairs themselves could even rotate. All right, they don't have to be straight on, right? They could, no, I don't need to <laughs> run update again. Maybe the steps have a, uh, you know, this sort of thing. And then that would give it a flow as well. So, okay, there's some options there. Uh, Mama says, uh, I'll be honest, this new version of the challenge streams are feeling amazing. Uh, I'd be joining the next challenge for sure. I'm just hoping we do something cyberpunk, sci-fi next time. Sci-fi. Well, uh, yeah, I'll consider putting it out in the poll and we'll see what kind of response we get. But yeah, we don't do enough sci-fi and I do love me some sci-fi. Uh, okay, I almost forgot, but we do need to talk about this. I saw... Uh, I saw your little red leaves back here and here. You ought to run with that, all right? This is what I'm thinking right here. Do that sort of thing. That would be beautiful. And this would also really give you a nice color scheme. You have that tree in the background that has that big, amazing red Japanese maple leaves on it. 
and your character is sitting there and you could have that dark tree trunk but yet your character maybe she's in that same red so it's this pop of red in in the middle of this dark trunk surrounded by all this other bright red that'd be lovely or you could even go this way which if it was me i probably would which is having the red but also bleeds into different variations of orange and yellows uh well probably not yellows that's too far and light oranges and maybe the the ones on the edges you know are, are more red and then they get more orange as they come towards the center and then she's the pop of whatever color red or yellow or whatever uh just think about getting outside of just green all right and that's something that a lot of you are doing uh you're just sticking to the green when nature has a lot of colors i mean just within this we've got this beautiful turquoise color and we've got this blue kind of slate gray uh, we've got this light uh, powdery sort of green, uh, then yellow green and red and violets and oranges. You don't have to use all of them, but they could bring a lot of life and interest. And all of a sudden, this silhouette of the tree could be beautiful because all the lines are being offset by the, uh, the red. Yeah. Okay, that would be my direction. You don't have to follow that. If it gives you an idea for something else, then uh, go for that. Brianna. Brianna is next. Okay. And notes. And I need to make my draw layer. Okay. Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> Where was number one? Right here. All right. Uh, horizon line. So one of the biggest issues with this scene is the perspective. And again, it's the utilizing of the space. I, I like the directions here. You look like you went through some good variations. Uh, you're doing a dry head that is also a centaur, which I didn't say it had to be, uh, you know, bipedal. So I'll go with that. That's fine. Um, you're doing some value studies. Who's lit? Who's shadowed? Okay. I don't know which one you're going with yet. So, uh, you know, that's sort of up to you. You've got to figure out one that works for you. And the color schemes, you did play around with some variations. Again, I don't know what you, one you're going with, so I can't really say how your uh, decision was on that. Uh, some of your references is good. These two. Now, you need to get other references for these. Like, this is the pose that you like in the idea and this is the pose that you like as far as like the baby on the back sort of thing. But you need a photo of this pose. All right? Maybe it doesn't have the baby on the back, but you need that. And then I need to see that you got that. And this pose is different from this pose. So whatever pose you do go with, I need to see a photo of that pose uh, that you're basing that on something real. Uh, these little characters are kind of interesting. They all look a little different, like mushroom and fawn. Looks like some sort of bird. That's curious. Like, she's got a whole group of them there. But horizon line. Let's talk about that first. All right. So we are looking almost... We're looking almost straight at this character. Um, I... I feel like we should be looking down on them, but we're not. So one of the things is we're looking up at this pot because it's curving upwards. So we're looking up at it. And then the shoulders are completely flat to us and the arms are raised over the head. So, okay. You've got this line indicating, I think that you were trying to look down on them, but that's not really coming across. 
one of the things is when you're drawing somebody from that angle and you're trying to look down on them, if that's what you're going for, is to uh, think about the neck, like, okay, the back of the neck is here. Uh, then there's a thickness for the top of the shoulders, right? Kind of get a triangle back there too, and and don't think, don't forget about how far that thickness is, and that it actually can come up really far on the head. Like if you were looking directly down on somebody, it would be like something like this, right? And so if you just keep offsetting that a little bit, all of a sudden you get something like this. and that this level starts backing up on the head. So I think you have to look at that. If we have the horizon line is right about, hmm, it's right about here, somewhere around here, because we're looking straight on at this character. And then we're looking down on this scene and then we're looking kind of straight at her. So I'm gonna say let's keep this more or less the way it is because it would involve the less change and then change her in order to match the rest of the scene. Uh, something else is just the idea of, uh, you know, I'll get to that. Uh, next up is this character is looking at a butterfly and it really is breaking the scene because it needs to be about this character and this character, and we don't have any connection. The main drag queen is not even recognizing the person that's offering the, uh, the item here. And in fact, the only one that's even looking this direction is that little guy in the background. But we need these two looking at each other so that we have the narrative interaction going on here and not just looking at the butterflies. Okay, number three is OL. Overlapping. <laughs> what was that for? And we don't have enough overlapping going on here. Um, it's almost like you're afraid to overlap stuff in the scene and that's one of the reasons we have this odd composition so this stands out by herself, doesn't overlap anybody, and is not overlapped. This little character by themselves doesn't overlap and is not overlapped and sits right inside of the frame. Everybody sits in their perfect little area. And this one overlaps just a little bit right there. Now we do have some good overlapping here, which is good because it builds depth. We've got this character does not overlap the queen. So no depth there. Remember, overlapping is one of the best ways in order to build depth to an image, and that depth helps bring believability. Uh, these, I'm gonna assume that these are like some sort of guards. I don't have enough information on these to really know what, who they are or what they are, or if they're part of a door, I, I don't know what they are. I'm going to assume there's some sort of guard. Uh, if that's the case, they need to be developed more because that's a big question mark. Okay, what else? Uh, number four, uh, baby O here probably needs to be bigger. Uh, a baby's head is remarkably large. It is overly large compared to the size of their body. So you can have a little baby body, but even if you compare like the size of this baby head, the size of mama's head, mama's head is not all that much bigger. And here we've got pretty, pretty big difference between heads. So I think baby probably needs to be 20% bigger. Now, going forwards, what's some stuff we can do? How would I suggest trying to do this? Well, uh, oh, okay, number five, before I get, show you that. I'm not understanding this very well at all. 
I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Like, where is this place? Uh, it's not developed well enough. Is it inside of a building? Is it inside of a tree? What is this flat thing? Is this fabric? Um, it doesn't feel like a throne. With the little guys here, it almost feels like some sort of school. All right, it, it doesn't have a throne feel. And none of this, like, none of all of this area is doing anything. And not even just giving us more information about where this place is. Even if it was just that. It's just flat. It's just completely flat. So, uh, here's whiteout just to kind of clear that up. So, I'm thinking something more like that. So if she was a bit more the proper perspective, uh, I just took a webcam photo of myself. And, oh, anyway, that, that's as dark as it gets because evidently I lightened it. Uh, so I took a webcam photo of myself, just quickly redrew over that in order to try to pose that up and then try to fit everything to the proper horizon line. And now she is larger here we were running out of space above her, right? We got the main character almost bumping her head on the uh, top of the frame. So we can bring her down. We've got some overlapping now. Woo! And that gives better depth. We've got the guards here up front, even closer to the camera. Nice. Overlapping these guys. Nice. More depth here. Instead of just a flat edge to the back, if we can make a nice curve to it, we could even continue the curves you know, like in this sort of fashion, if there was some sort of design on the floor, that could work well. Uh, we have her turning to actually look at this person. And we have her looking down here at the person. And maybe her hand is still here with some butterflies flying around. That's fine. But we've got to have them acknowledging each other. We've got more overlapping with the little fellow sitting around, right? Uh, this is nice, the way that the uh, the big tree circle thing. What if it grew that way? I say go with it. That's cool, you know? Like just, ooh, and, and there's a big frame, and outside can be nice and bright colors and what if, you know, maybe it has one of these big white trees back there behind her so that, you know, the silhouette of her horn stands out really well against it. I don't, I don't know, maybe the ends of these things are, are like the white trees. That'd be cool too, you know? Um, and then break it up so it's not like a perfect circle, but have like, you know, flowers wrapping in around the wood and have like little spots of nice bright colors of flowers going around. Uh, additionally, see about uh, stretching the legs out a little bit on the, uh, the bottom of the character. She's getting a little, uh, I'm going to almost say too realistic. Now, if we can make her a little extra sinewy, long, graceful. Uh, take a look at, uh, oh man, I just bought her a book. J-A-W, artist, J-A-W, her book, uh, Pastoral. You'll have to Google for it, Pastoral by J.A.W. Uh, it's put out by... I can't remember. Anyway, Google it. You can probably find it. Uh, J.A.W.'s artwork, really nice and very lyrical way to draw animals. And that might give you some ideas of how to handle that. Uh, this leg was probably a bit too much of a 45 I mean, a 90, so I would just change it a little bit. J-A, yeah, that's it, J-A-W Cooper. There we go, thank you, Ben. That's who I was thinking about. Picked up her book, it's lovely. Anyway, all right, gotta wrap it up there and move on to the next one. But uh, Brianna, I hope you find that useful and thank you for joining the challenge. Okay, Clint Lockwood. Clint, man, what a good name. You are a lucky guy to have a name so good. All right, number one, we're going to start with idea. That's what I do for idea, I with a circle around it. 
and there's a good idea that's gone off track somewhere that we are too far removed from this being a dryad queen if it wasn't for just this little thing added on the forehead there was no way i would consider that a dryad this person if they were wearing any materials like fabrics it should be very minimal remember this is a character this is a creature that is made out of tree or moss or you know leaves you know that sort of thing and you can combine all kinds of nature things but it is nature things all right it's not a person that has just branches coming off they are made of tree uh, they don't even necessarily have to have human features um, what you can do is just have you know the form of a human made out of wood and have you know flowers and and leaves coming off of it so we've got to push it that way so and that way we've deviated much too far from the idea and i'm going to push you that it needs to follow that it still needs to be a dryad queen not a human uh not wearing you know asian style clothing which is what that looks like it is on the other hand you're doing some super good stuff and i want to talk through some of this uh number two these were all fantastic all right you are uh, probably doing more than you need to for thumbnail drawings but uh, for those watching online let's pull up so you have a better view and i need to make a new letter but these are lovely i like the idea of her being large so these are all good these are solid ideas that you could proceed with her being really big okay good but she needs to be part of the tree she needs to be a tree creature it just looks like a big lady all right it just looks like a giant so uh not wearing a dress she's all wood uh so there's not the whole sexuality thing like she's just yeah uh then you know she wouldn't have normal hair if anything it would be moss cascading down um i can't remember if i save yeah here we go this is concept art for tafiti from uh, disney's moana something on that direction would work where she's made of flowers and rocks and moss and, and maybe some of it's very soft maybe she her face is like it's a delicately almost like delicately carved wood face that has a soft you know moss to the front of it that's almost like you know smooth but yeah we've got to go more one of those directions uh this is really cool too uh with him wading through the water and with her there this is really go good good it's kind of epic this is one where i could probably go along with allowing that much space to it because it sets up the grandeur of this scene where you know on the other ones i'm saying better make better use of the space this one's actually making good use of space because of how he's utilizing it with the lighting and building it into an entire scene uh so that's really cool too i think this one it's nice it's rendered well nice but it, it needs some more work here like it's not really connecting up as well uh value schemes these are excellent and i'm with you this one is the best choice i like the change of the angle uh, breaking it up from just being completely symmetrical I know the tree also kind of breaks it up. So you've got this. Uh, consider how you can maybe make more of a, a pattern out of it. This is really nice. The angle of the head looking at the sword. So you've got this, and then this, and then what do we want? We want that, right? We want to continue that. So we need to figure out a way, like maybe this guy, it's reversed. You've got this guy here. 
with his high hand on this side and his low hand on that side. So there it starts carrying that angle back down. Um, so I'm going to go that way. And I think that is more interesting than where this is. Uh, so this one, this character is just looking off nowhere. She, her eye line doesn't match this, and it doesn't match the sword. It just looks off to wherever. So one or the other would be better. And I'd probably go with that head tilt since it creates that nice angle. Uh, these are good variations of color schemes. They're very cool night light, uh, moonlight, and then uh, the green is good, and you know, nature palette, and then the, uh, the warm tones. So lighting's kind of cool. Okay, you're going with the green, which is fine. I mean, it's nature. It should probably have green in it but it's almost too limited. We need to get a bit more out of it. And let's read over this. Uh, you said the same thing here. I'm kind of stuck on the I hate everything point. Uh, I wish you were a little more specific about it, but we'll see. Figured it was better to spend something than nothing? Absolutely. There's always stuff to talk about. I like this scene because it felt the best fit for the portfolio piece towards game companies, but I don't like the lack of depth. Just hoping to hear your general thoughts, and if you think a different thumbnail or color scheme works better. Uh, I think either one of these scenes, uh, I would go with this one, or this one, or this one. Probably not that one, but I would keep that thumbnail around because I could see that being utilized for something else and developed into a different kind of scene that makes use of the same lighting and, and general composition. Okay. Yeah, there isn't much depth. Uh, we do have decent depth to it, but we're not making use of a lot of this where there's no sense of background. There's no sense of anything beyond this l set of limbs. So we could use that in order to try to build more depth. We could also add more things that overlap these guys and this stuff in order to try to get more depth of it as well. Also, if we can create um, value and color planes for foreground, midground, and background, that's going to accentuate depth as well. So I'm going to assume this becomes a dryad and not a human. I'm going to assume that you adjust that pose a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to assume that you want to work with this guy because he is bland. All right, there's no, there's no anything to him. Uh, I don't know if you just ran out of time or didn't think about it, but he needs to be somebody. Is he a knight? Is he a scholar? Is he a boy? Is he, who, who is he? Uh, you just got this shirtless guy with his hands up. So, you know, is he a king? Is he, try to give him some character that's going to help add a little bit to the scene. All right, so I started throwing some stuff together in order to figure out how to do this. I went out and I grabbed, I don't even know if I downloaded it. Let me back up and see if I did. Okay, yeah, these were the ones that were supplied to you guys as far as uh, different ideas and references. I grabbed Jeremy Finsky's uh, image that he did inspired by the Zelda Breath of the Wild game. This is absolutely beautiful piece. This is one of the favorite pieces that I have come across in the last couple of years. It is just absolutely beautiful. I love it. So I got that, and I threw that into the background. So I threw that back there, and then I used a mask. And so I made a mask, and I just painted in the areas where I would want the, it to show up, you know, around the limbs. There's link right back there. And then I started trying to layer it out a little bit. Now, right now, it already it has more depth because there's an, a proper background. And, and this becomes mid-ground. He becomes foreground. So that, what if we add a bit more color? A little pop of light back there. Okay, cool. And then a foreground plant, maybe, in order just to, again, 
bring a little more overlapping in there and bring in a little more leaves to overlap this near guy and maybe some bright leaves overlapping this and now we're getting a sense of a canopy that's all over this area and then we could have that bright light coming down on your main character following what you have in your value study there and I would say you know adjusting that so uh, and that can basically fall across the head and the sword and then I'm not sure what you're going to do down here as far as the uh, image change and we'd probably need to adjust some of the values and colors like this is super blue and cool in the shadows the rest of this might want to go that direction but you can see how this all still sets within that green color scheme but it expands it out a little bit more to you know coolers and the gr cooler greens warmer greens brighter greens where the rest of them were basically dull brown green and varying lights and darknesses not even that much change in saturation and uh, not pushing out towards either side of particularly warm or particularly cool but there you go that's your breakdown clint and uh, it's it's gonna be a lovely piece i think you could easily get it up to anything near this level and it has that potential and based on the skills that i see that you're exampling the rest of it i totally think you can i think this one that you were just getting a little frustrated with and maybe the number of options just sort of overwhelmed you but don't restart it right don't go back and you know you seem like one of the people that you probably would but don't push through with this one start with the character design figure out who this character is and what the new design of the character is stick with the basic pose of the sword there at that nice angle and figure out who this is you might need to repose him a little bit take a photo of a friend take a webcam photo figure out what that would be like and then once you figure out what their design is then move on to how anything else in the composition needs to be adjusted and also the uh the lighting start getting into that okay good stuff good stuff Any comments? Uh... Okay, next up, Gilherm Diaz. Okay, number one, Gilherm. As you might have noticed we're kind of missing all of the value and color studies. Um, the less you do, the less you're going to get out of it. All right, um, I, I really was expecting everything to be filled in. Uh, since we're you know taking the time to do this, but I'm gonna I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you had to work overtime or somebody got sick, that sort of thing, and you weren't able to do it. In which case, okay, I get it. We'll move on. We got other things to talk about. So. Number two, the idea. All right, again, this is another one where the idea is meandering away from what the outline of the image should be. We've gone a long ways from dryad and nature scene. You've got a plant-ish thing here and this looks like a totally normal building totally normal steps completely man-made um, there really shouldn't be much if anything that's man-made here this should be a force this this should all be made out of nature it's a dryad queen in her nature throne area so we've got to bring it back to that now the thing is, you can use all of these same architectural, you know, layouts and ideas, but instead of making them stone and, and mortar and, and and you know, I guess carved wood, that sort of thing, that it has to become nature. It has to become the inside of a tree who's 
form is grown into this shape. And there has to be a little more irregularity to things. So make sure that we're bringing that back. Also, she looks very human. Like if I didn't know she was supposed to be a dryad, there was no way I would know she's a dryad. Um, so we've got to play into that. We've got to make her dryad. She's a tree creature. Uh, number three. Yeah, basically the same thing is you've got this nice reference photo of this beautiful trees and forest, and there's none of that at all in the image. I don't know why this is even here. Like, you didn't use anything inspired from this in this scene. So we've got to go back to this. All right, we've got to make the scene go back to being influenced by this sort of thing. Okay, number four. This is another one where, okay, you've got the same idea. Guy kneeling down, crouching, groveling, uh, whatever you want to call that pose. And you've got the throne back here, okay. And you're playing out kind of high, low viewpoints. That's fine. Uh, but you ended up choosing one that has practically no perspective and no depth. And we want to push that. And I'll show, I'll show you an example of how we could go about trying to do that. Uh, before I forget, I, you say, I will do other value studies before moving on. Uh, I would say other value studies. You haven't done any. Uh, once you define a color palette, how do you work cooler shadows and warmer highlights without going outside the defined colors? Uh, you've probably heard that somewhere. Warm light has cool shadows. A lot of times that's true. But that's not set because cool lights also have warm shadows. The opposite can be true. And that can be not true at all if you are in a super biased lighting situation. If I am, let's say I'm in front of a stained glass window and there's a big red pane of glass and the light comes through that and it hits me. I'm going to be red. No matter if I have, you know, a green bandana on, it's not going to be green. It's going to be closer to gray. But it's not going to be warm light, cool shadows. Because all the light is warm. So that's not a fixed thing. It just depends. Like here, is this light warm? No. This is blue, cool, chill light. And the shadows are actually maybe a little bit warmer. So it totally depends. That, that rule is true for warm light most of the time. Okay, moving on. Number five, just the overall scene of let's try to find a better composition because this is another one where most of this is not giving us what we need for the scene everything that is interesting and pertinent that is going on is right here and it's taking up 20 percent of the image so how can we go about utilizing the space more making it a bit more dynamic uh, here we go first is I'm, I'm just using this scene all right i'm just using copying and pasting and going through this i just wanted the background Boom, I get the background, we're looking up at it. We're gonna have more perspective. Uh, we're looking up at this throne. So that means that we're gonna have this tilt. Also means if we're looking up at it, this is gonna be a heavier dip. So you can see that, uh, let me make on this layer. You can see that, right? Okay, and then after that, I copy and paste her, and make her way bigger. Instead of this, we've got her taking up more of the scene. And we're still leaving plenty of room to get the context of what's going on up here. And the thing is, if we're looking up at it, it allows us to show just as much of the background, but because it's in perspective, we actually need less room to show you all the same stuff. Okay, now she's bigger. We get a better view of her. 
she's taking up more room. I did rough perspective on her. You would have to rework that. Uh, painting these guys out. Now, these guys don't work with perspective. Let's chat about that. So here we have some perspective lines. So if we put these guys in line, then you're saying that your viewpoint, it's where these guys meet at the horizon where, you know, the vanishing point is there. You're saying your eye line is at this level, which means that everything below that you're looking down on, everything above that you're looking up at, but we're not looking down on it. This is absolutely flat to our view. So we're not seeing the top of that, you know, I don't know, throne, plane, das, whatever. Uh, we're also not seeing the top of the seat. We're not looking down on any of this. So those guys aren't matching the perspective of anything. If anything, the horizon line is about, would be about here. It's about as close as you could get because it would allow us to not see the top of that and would also be looking up this at just a small angle and we'd only be seeing a little bit of the steps thickness of the steps so that would be pretty close so running with that assumption we need to just paint those guys out because we'll need to reset those up this guy is going to be much closer to the camera all right and as long as we work the perspective right, that will work, and he's not going to seem like a giant. Boom. So quick perspective. In order to figure out the guards, we can run through a couple of things. We need to start with her. She's the closest thing that we know to a known height. So what we'll do is... We get her height of her leg. Uh, yeah, that's on a different layer. Okay. That's her shin. We'll assume that her thigh is about the same distance. That would reach up to her crotch, which would mean that that is halfway up her normal human-esque uh, form. So she'd be about twice that tall. So if she was standing up, she would be somewhere in that region height wise which is what this is so that is her height now what we do is we drop her to the same perspective that these guys will be on now these guys are going to be standing on this perspective not her perspective so we've got a lot for the steps the steps are this tall right so instead of her standing here let's assume that she's standing there which is the same spot but on the ground underneath her if the steps weren't there. In which case, she's this tall. Let's take that out. Uh, then we can use that in order to help approximate the height of the soldiers. So we get that height and we run it over here. Over to here. And then we get her in line with the vanishing point. So we're going to have a soldier like here and here. And then we make a line between the two soldiers out to the horizon line, and we get a vanishing point right here. And then because we know her height, and we assume that they are the same height, then we can track this to say if there was a person here, that would be in line with her head, right? So her height over here is this. And we run the horizon line on the vanishing point to her head. So their heads need to be on that line, their feet need to be on that line, and this is how big they would be if they're standing right there. And this guy's even further back, right? He's even further back this way. So he, if he stood up, he would be about that tall. No, maybe about that tall. So if he crouched over, I'm gonna say that seems about right. So, boom, there's a, uh, there's sketch in of a little soldier dude. And of course, all of this from his crotch up, you're looking up at him, so we've got to have that proper perspective on him. Boop. 
And then if you make a line of them, ta -da, there they are. Now this, okay, thank you. This would be them in perspective, following the same size as everybody else. And uh, we've filled in all of this part of the image with your main subjects, or at least with subjects that at least help fill it out with the narrative. And we still leave plenty of room for you to do some big throne room, you know, work back there. Yeah, that was your old one, so I painted him out. So, okay, there's your direction, Gilharm. I'm gonna suggest going something like this and getting more of that perspective, making sure everybody's working in that perspective, making better use of the overall uh, space of your canvas and make sure that we're bringing it all the way back to dryad, trees, nature, and not a proper, um, you know, manufactured man-made location. Lisa, Lisa, you are up. Let's take a look what you got here. Okay. Uh, first up, another good example of composition studies. Now, you made full value studies along with your composition studies, which is fine. Uh, some people think in terms of that way. Um, I'm, I really think this is the strongest piece, a strongest option between the three, uh, because it it says everything. She feels like a queen in a throne area. And the rest of these don't. I, I don't get that. There's not a sense of it being a throne. There's not a sense of her being a queen. There's no opulence to anything. Um, so I'm not sure why you chose to go with these other scenes. Yeah. And there's kind of a disparity between like, you've got this lighting reference here, but you don't have anything like that lighting really in your scene. Uh, now, as far as your inspiration, you're going with um, Venus, Aphrodite, I get offhand, it's probably Venus. Um, that's a lovely classical piece, so that's good inspiration there. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll make suggestions and I'll show you some ideas about if you want to move forwards with this scene. But I'm also going to say, really consider going back to this one, because I think in the end, this is going to do better for you than what you can get out of this one. And that you're just, you're taking it so far here, because now she doesn't feel like a queen. Um, and there's something else going on with like trees splitting and blood coming out and blood coming off of her. And, you know, the, the outline was that it was supposed to be this beautiful setting. And this isn't beautiful. Um, this, and, and beauty can come in a lot of different ways, but this isn't really any version of beautiful. Um, like you can have beautiful and it all be like kind of autumn, you know, leaves turning. You can even have a, a cold, uh, icy scene that's beautiful with, you know, the white snow and everything. So in environments can be very varied and be beautiful, but this looks very dead and kind of dull. So, yeah. I think you're making the context that the squirrel is offering her some magic acorn that will rejuvenate the area because it's kind of like green around him. Um, hmm, I don't know. Seems like you're kind of pushing it there. Okay, uh, you played around with some value schemes and you ended up going with not really any of them or this one, but it's even less. The values are really doled down a lot. 
Okay, so you're talking about these. If you're going to go this direction, this is how I continue uh, answering these. I first thought, is it looked sickly and dying, also like a spirit or creature, not really a queen? I see what they were going for. Yeah, I'm with Neon on this. I, I get what you're going for, but I don't think it's really working. Uh, so if you want to, tr I always try to answer it both ways. If what I think would be the right answer, and then if you're going to try to do this, what's a more effective way to do it? Uh, I think the better answer is to go back to this and do that. And you can still apply the same sort of idea. The, this could be, not be green. It could be um, all the, oh, sorry, I've got an alarm going off. It could be these uh, colors that are all grayed out, like the trees are becoming almost fossilized and, and, and gray and, and dead. And you, you can see the gradient of color change as it goes up the entire scene but moving on if you want to do this scene we need to use a discordant color scheme discordant um, we're looking at the other ones was where it is all of one color with one offsetting color you usually see that where things are gray or black and white with one pop of color for something and that's really what we need here because this green needs to really shine out as being very different. So the rest of this probably needs to be very dulled down and be within whatever color scheme you want. It can be in blues, it can be this brownish color, but it all needs to be that sort of tone. And then that way that this green is the only pop of color and it will, you know, shine out. And it will really convey more of this is not like the rest right this is the answer uh, the blue is curious the blue doesn't really fit with anything it's not within the color scheme of the tree it's not within the color scheme of the actual color palette it's just blue so it feels like you're picking colors kind of randomly and let's see some more thought behind that and a more connection with how the colors are being used. What I really see going on is number four, the pose is driving the image. Like you found this photo and you thought, I like that, I want to use it. And then you tried to figure out a way for the scene to work with that. And that's tricky so and it's this and this combined all right so you're using strangler tree which is frankly fascinating the idea of a strangler tree is really curious uh if anybody watching this is not familiar with it it's this tree that's kind of like a vine in that it it grows up around the outside of another tree now, I'll zoom up on these so you can see. It grows up around the outside of another tree. And it grows up around it so much that it engulfs it and it kills it. It, it steals all of its nutrients, blocks its sunlight, and just strangles it. It's, it's a strangler tree. And the tree inside of it will end up dying and rotting away which will leave this hollow space of where the original tree was and it'll just be this lattice work of the strangler tree going up around now that's cool but we don't have enough of that to know that that's what that is all right that that looks like some sort of i don't know it doesn't look like a strangler tree it doesn't have that right pattern this is more um, more drippy, right? Where you, you should see more drippy spots between this and a lot more little ones overlapping it. Uh, more like vines just kind of networking. But it, it has this sort of loop thing on the bottom of it. So I'm going to say we need to go back to re thinking about her character. 
Uh, let's get rid of the blue. Let's make her all the wood color. Uh, let's see if we can find something more interesting with the hair. Like if she actually had leaves, then all of a sudden, then we would feel like maybe that's more tree-like. But right now it's just this brown twisty shapes going into this blue shape that's bleeding. So I, it's just, yeah, that the ideas aren't really, those concepts aren't coming together. Okay. Value-wise, we're looking at this, which is it's very um, doled down. And it doesn't have really any darks and lights making it pop. And it's much duller than any of your value studies. So this is something that you guys need to make sure you're doing is when you do these studies, figure out what you're learning from those and apply it. Right? Make sure that we're not just doing the studies and then forgetting what to do with them, how to implement them. Uh, this is the same scene just with some values changed where she is treated more like a silhouette because it's a sadder scene, right? She, she's in a darker emotional place. And so we can have her more in shadow. The background can stay a bit more like it where it was, which is it's, it's dulled down. Uh, I've accentuated just some of this kind of foggy feeling of, you know, this light just kind of drifting in there. But then there's this way more pop of light down there with a little squirrely. And remember, since that light is so brilliant, then its cast shadows are going to be, or its shadow structure is going to be more prominent. There's going to be a higher contrast between light and dark. The light back here is very diffused, so there's going to be very little difference between light and shadow. So I'm um, kind of taking it that way and making more use of the space, something along this line. We could have her turning to look at him. This is another one where the eye line is not matching up, right? Uh, we've got her looking where? Here there at most but she's not looking here that that's not what the eye line looks like so that can serve as an idea but we need a different pose all right take your own based on that idea so here we can have her turning and looking this guy can be bigger closer to the camera maybe he's just up on a branch that's what i'm thinking about here there's just a branch that's closer to the camera that allows him to be off of the ground we're going to cut the distance down between these guys so there's not this big gap from corner to corner. We can have him bigger here so we get more detail. We can make out what it is that he's holding and we get more tree shapes out of this. And if that limb is here, then we can even continue that as a compositional pattern by having more limbs coming out that way. Ah, just some ideas. All right, trying to Trying to figure out where you could go with uh, that direction. But, all right, wrapping it up on that one. Lisa, thank you. Um, I'm not sure what you'll do with it, but I'm looking forward to see. I know that you can do it, though. You, you show good ideas. You show good um, control of the values. And I just think that you're trying to get too many disparaging ideas, and they're not coming together well. Okay, this one is Madao Way. Now, Madao, number one, uh, good variations. All right, the, these are all good concepts. All right, uh, you you got the idea. Okay, let me read this here because it sort of deals with it. Uh, sacrifice scene. Samurai fought his way through to get to the queen of the forest to save his coast child the queen asked him if he was ready to ready to anything to give anything for his child to the ultimate sacrifice his own life ba -na -na. 
So we played with that a couple of different ways. Looking down on it, more of a worm's eye view, distance back a little bit with the kid up in the air by some magic. All right, so you went with this one, but you flop the canvas. Okay, cool. Let's have more variations of that because we can probably push this even further. And the idea of what's going on here as far as the actions and the things taking place are good, but maybe we need some more variations of that. Alisa, you're welcome. I'm glad you were able to join in. And I'll see my other notes to see if this is when I'm talking about it or not. Yeah, so here, everything is very separated. And we're not, again, it's like your major characters are fairly small and there is no overlapping between anything. And that's not always bad, but I'm, I'm seeing it come up as being an issue in a lot of these and that's one of the things that you see on these like this one lots of overlapping lots of depth on all that stuff um, I'm also not getting dryad queen it it's more skeletal and not queen like uh, I I will allow for dark queen Okay, fine. She's not elegant and beautiful. Um, and she's not nice, let's say. She's this dark queen of the forest. And maybe the, the forest has got a bad side. And people have been taking it to the forest. And they, uh, she's, she's ready to take out some, some revenge. Uh, Neon says, uh, to clarify, anyone can do the monthly challenge, but to get your personal critique, we need to be patrons or purchase a ticket. Uh, anyone can do the challenge. If you just want to go download the files in the outline, then it's available out on the, uh, the Swatches Facebook group. There's links out there. You can go download it. And yeah, please do. Knock yourself out. Have fun. Uh, but if you want to join the challenge, you will have had to have a ticket. Now, I did open up wild card position. If somebody who did not have a ticket wanted to try for a random drawing, uh, but nobody entered for the wild card. I had no uploads to that folder. So, yep, yeah, <laughs> this is not going to be the wild card. If anybody entered, they would have won. There we go. Um, I don't know if I'll do it next week since nobody really looked like they were involved. But you can't get into this one right now and get personal critique unless, I'll, I'll toss this out there to you. If you want to start working on this and then you uh, schedule like a half hour video consultation, then we can sit down one-on-one -on -one like this and talk through your image and you can ask me questions and we can work through it that way. That's another option. Uh, but again, that'll be in like at least two weeks because I've got to clear out the stuff off my calendar first. Okay, uh, so. Uh, yeah, like reposing. Like, do, do we need to see this? Like, I get the idea this guy's crouching. Could he be closer to the camera and taking up this room? Could they be more, uh, like, could... Could this character be more over here with the child up top with some overlapping between the main guy and the villain as he's looking up there? All right, so we have more of an um, overlap sort of thing going on. And we also need to think about his pose a little bit. I, we'll come back over to these. And... I'm not getting the feeling that that's his son or that he's really concerned about it because he's looking here. If that was my kid and I thought this, you know, this person is about to kill them, I'm looking at my kid. I care about the kid. 
So we need to get his eye line up here. We also need to try to show uh, concern, um, nervousness with the pose. Now this is a very steady pose. It's like, not too concerned. I'm just, I'm here, I'm just holding my sword. But what if we put the sword maybe on the back? Probably at that, that angle would be better than that other angle that I sketched in earlier. So what if we had his, you know, sword and the scabbard on the back, and then his hand all of a sudden, he's like, oh. you know, like you do, like you're going to watch somebody about to fall, and you, you instinctively just reach out to try to grab them. And that's what he's doing. And maybe he's got this hand, you know, he's looking up now. And this hand is instinctively just reaching out. Like, he wants to catch him if he falls. Now we've got a better idea of, again, like, splaying the fingers is a better way to show, you know, ex the emotion than this closed, you know, composed um, position. And then we get better uh, feeling like he's concerned about the boy. He's he, over in this person. The only other difference would be, um, the only other direction I could really see going is if he's in the middle of rushing with a sword at this dude. Like he wants to try to kill him or her. He wants to kill her before she kills him. And you could play it that way in which it becomes, uh, you know, a different context of, of what's going on. Who, who can work faster, right? <laughs> Uh, so that's that's something else to consider. Now, we do want to try to build the connection between these two. And one of the ways you could do that is with the color. And we want to make sure that they are sharing colors. I, I don't know if you did that intentionally or randomly, but like you have here a little red, you know, clothing, Komodo, and he should also have, like down here is like a red sash, which is excellent. So we want to have them having similar colors. So you feel the emotional connection or, or just, you know, acknowledged connection. And then that color should not be used anywhere else. Everything else should be, you know, on a different color scheme, different color palette. Uh, as far as how to take this, I would go a really different route with it because of the context and the story that you've built up. I would lean much further into the, the evil queen direction. And that reminded me of this piece by Brad Rigney. If you kind of brought that vibe into it, all of a sudden this is a place of dead trees and she is made of dead wood and rot and fungus and there is just this eerie fog and mist that that emanates out from the base of this tree so that even the bottom half of this character is almost lost in the mist and there's some ill light that is, you know, effect that is going on around this child. Some magic effect going on there. And, you know, things are a bit more silhouetted. And I don't know if you would even have leaves on this tree. But if they do, almost everything is gray tone. And the color you would want to come from the child and from the man. They are the only truly living things in this scene the only flesh and blood in this scene and if you do have leaves let them be kind of like almost like they were burnt they're all black and withered and there's lots of leaves just falling down this is a play it's just you know all the time there's just these burnt little leaves filtering down around this foggy gray scene uh, yeah, I think that could be super cool. It's quite a ways from what the initial 
brief was, but it's up to you. Think about it if you want to go that way or not. Uh, I will say this is a really excellent pose for the kiddo, and I totally get the feeling of what's going on. They feel like they've been spelled, and magic is holding them up, and yeah. And the overall shapes here, I think, I mean, the overall design of how you're building the character works. Uh, I think we can even maybe go a little less human with it. Uh, and something else to consider is like maybe it doesn't even have legs. Maybe it's just stuff that, you know, twists up into this shape. And that they can, they're kind of like a swamp thing, right? It can just merge into plants wherever it is and, and merge out of them. So here you go. All right, that wraps it up for you, man. Uh, hopefully you find that with some good direction and give you some ideas. Uh, I'm actually going to do Veronica first and, and go back to uh, Nicholas because I put notes on everybody except Nicholas. I just ran out of time before I had to take off. So I will do those live uh, at the last one since it's not done yet. Okay, so this time we're looking at Veronica O'Neill. And I'm going to set up my paint layer here. There we go. Veronica, let's start with the comments. Uh, that's where number one is. I wanted to get the feel as if the throne area where the queen sits is further back with the offering figure very close to the camera but struggled to get the composition. Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so uh, we will talk about that. And that gets into a little bit more of the composition viewpoint, that sort of thing. So we'll get to that with the little sketch sort of thing. Uh, number two, uh, variations uh, lower, uh, right line, okay. So these variations all stem from the same basic idea, but I think what you're missing is changing the eye line and the level that the camera is at because you have very high eye lines, um, uh, horizon lines in all of these images. All right, there, that's one of the reasons that we're not getting that distance the way that you want and the character feeling closer to the camera. One of the things to keep in mind with that is that usually a character closer to the camera is often higher than the camera. The camera sits lower in order to look up at various things. I'll show you an example when we get there. Number three, perspective. So perspective, if we take a look at this, it's the same sort of thing that we ran through earlier. But I'll run through it again. Maybe you didn't understand. And also for her. Maybe she won't go watch the rest of them. So uh, let's step through it this way. We have an assumed normal character height. And there's no reason to think that this character is anything other than the normal human size. So there we go. Now we need to figure out what the horizon line is. Now, I guess the horizon line was about there because we don't seem to be looking up or down at this character. So I'm going to say the horizon line was about there. Now, what we want to do is use this character to tell us how big that character is supposed to be. And for that, we need to get them on the same plane. That is, their feet are on the same level. Nobody's higher or lower than anyone else. And she is up a little bit. So that's what this line is for. It's offsetting the uh, steps. So if you bring her off the steps down to about that level, that means we also need to take her head down a little bit. So the same distance here, we're moving her head down, so her head's about there. So this is now the new height. Boom. Now what I want to do is run from heel to heel. I will use a line for that. So from his heel to her heel we make a line. 
and we run that line all the way up to the horizon line. And there we do, there we get a vanishing point. Now we do the same thing with the head in reverse. That same vanishing point to her head, out, and we don't need that far, boom, out to here. And then we run from his heel up to there. That's how tall he should be. But remember he is crouching or he's, he's bowing, all right? So we've got to assume that he's not quite that, as tall as he would normally be, or she. I'm not even sure he's a she. I think it's a guy. Um, so it's going to be a bit lower than that. So I guessed it, yeah, right around here. In which case, uh, let me go ahead and clear that out. Boom. That's how we got to that point. Turn off notes. Uh, yeah. So this character actually in this scene needs to be about that big, which is what I got here. Boom. And that would be if they were here, but we're cutting off too much of the back, so we're moving them over a little bit. Boom. And then I just put their magic over here. And paint out some of that stuff. Take that out. There. So that would be more accurate, right? Uh, that would at least get them the right size with the perspective of what's going on. But, same thing, saw in a lot of these others. Look at all of that. That's not really doing hardly anything. This helps a little bit, giving, you know, idea of where they are. Uh, we don't need this much up here to tell us what's going on there. So is there a more dynamic way to do this? Uh, probably. So uh, for what was I going to talk about here? Like this value scheme works. Uh, can we get rid of the, uh, can we get rid of the sunbeam? All right, the god light, god ray, to get rid of it. All right, we, we don't need it. Just just let her be lit, and we, we probably don't need that. Because if, there's, don't, there's not enough atmosphere in the rest of this to really justify it. Okay. Um, color scheme-wise, I, I mean, I think it's okay. I think you could probably bring more colors into this character. But I was thinking about how to explain this, I'm going to show you an example of how to go about this. And this is Hellboy 2. This is a scene of Hellboy 2. I don't remember the names of the characters, but this elfin dude is going up to see his father, King Elfin Dude. And look how this is composed. Look at the camera. Look at the sizes, the ratios of the people. And you notice that the camera eye level is under his eye level. It's down here. So that perspective all leans, the vanishing point is right here by where this guy's head is. So all of these lines converge on that point, which happens to be lower than this guy. So this guy can seem bigger and closer to the camera. Now, if we can use that as a guide, boom, there we go. Dropped him into the scene. Now, you could use a composition like that, right? This guy can have his mean little dagger in the back where he wants to kill the person with. And he's offering the other thing out here. And then you've got the of the character back there. And he's nice and big in front of the camera. And then you have them back there. Now this seems too far away. That character is tiny. And we also have a lot of wasted space. Now in a movie, of course, he's moving. And so wasted space isn't that big of a deal because he makes use of it during the actual motion. Uh, I didn't mean to actually write on that layer. Uh, but we could get this and 
move closer to that character and have him here. All right, so this still works. All right, we have that character like this, and we're, all we're doing is we're keeping the perspective the same, and we're just moving that closer to us so they're not so tiny. But something like that, that could work for your scene. So instead of looking down on everything, like we are now, looking at, down on it at this angle, we have more of this view, and I think that would serve you better. I think on the whole, that would be better. And you can use the same sort of, you know, have this big tree shape, all right, as that's going up. Well, it could even be closer than that. And then this, he could have his arm, instead of out front, it could be a bit more to the side. All right, his arm can be like here, and the magic can be like here, and we can just have some, you know, a plant or something there, just from, kind of take that corner up. And then he's got the dagger back here, and they could be even a little bit bigger if you wanted to, something like that. Yeah, got this cool tree. That's not what I meant. Some of these big limbs going off this way to help offset him. So, yeah, I think that would be a more effective uh, composition, and that's how you can go about it. Um, that's a good ways to use photos. Like, I'm not copying this scene. Uh, I'm adjusting this scene, but I'm learning from the cinematography of how they shot it and composed it and using that knowledge in order to build your scene with the same sort of composition and you know understanding so there you go uh i, I think that was everything on that yeah no that's cool so there you go i uh, hope you find that helpful i think you're on the right line i think you're just getting confused with the uh perspective and composition sort of stuff but hopefully you find that uh understood and followed what i was trying to do there mm, i don't think it took that come on all right so i don't have any notes on this one yet i just got to this one i had to take off uh, this is uh, Nicholas. Now, Nicholas has some really nice value study thumbnails up here. Let's zoom up. I want to take a look at this. These are all quite dynamic. Uh, if you put some more light on this one, it would be even more dynamic. But look at these shapes. This is wonderful flowing shapes leading you right to the subjects so that's cool this is cool using this pattern and then you're offsetting it by the straight line this is cool with it all going this way the character is leaning that way with that straight line leading up there so yeah that's that's neat uh veronica says uh swatches thank you so much for the feedback really gave me a clear eyed way of addressing my key concern with the image can you get back to working on it to improve it for final well, you're welcome, Veronica. And yeah, I have high confidence that you will, and you will uh, work it out, and it'll look really good. Uh, so those are excellent. I'm totally good with the one that you chose. Uh, any one of those would be a good image. Uh, Nicholas, if you would, let me know who did that image, or if there's anybody in chat who knows who did that image. That's lovely. I would love to go download the... Uh, higher res, full res version of that. And uh, yeah, it's probably out on ArtStation somewhere. But if you know who did that, let me know. I'm going to go find it. And that's the sort of level and style of art that you're trying to get to. This is some of your ideas as far as lighting. And you got your uh, little photo example here. That's, that's good. That works. Uh, this is kind of curious, like you did a little study based on the pose of how wood would handle. And Oh, Nicholas, you are in chat. Awesome. Okay. And now let's take a look at your value studies of this particular scene. Yeah, because there is different ways to handling this. 
this is like your initial idea over here with the dark uh, figure with the light coming out from behind them. Or you could go with, you know, the spill light over the side or this light. Now, I'm with you. I would I'd go with either one of these. That one, not so much the right reason, maybe. But even if you just shadowed this, that would help. But I still don't think that's your best choice. This one feels less beautiful. It has more of a negative uh, vibe. It has, it's, I want to say it's horror, but mystery at best. Ominous. Ominous is what I'm trying to think of. It has a very ominous feel to it, which is perhaps not really what you want. Um, color schemes, you're not really playing around with the color schemes that much. You're, you're, you're swapping the, through the hue saturation, but, uh, yeah, uh, like, does it have analogous color scheme? Does it have a complementary? Not so much, but I, I think you're going on with the fine thing. You're going with the uh, Baobab tree, which is a really curious tree. Yep, Socotra bottle tree for the Dryad and the old worn out Baobab. Uh, this is meant to represent a pilgrim bringing in a magic seed of renewal or spring of sorts to the Dryad Queen in her arid and dry kingdom. I was really not sure which direction to go with the place and so lost a lot of time and didn't manage to push it further. Thanks for the feedback. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to give you check. These are nice, good studies. Eh, okay, on the color variations. But if we want to take this further and do more with it, what can we do? Well, one of the same things that we've said on the other ones is I don't think that there's enough size difference. I'm assuming that there is a fairly large distance between these two characters, but they're not really that big of a difference. I know that he's crouched down, or, or at least kind of leaning over, but still, I would expect this character to be twice the size that he is. We also have all of this. Can we utilize the space a little better? Um, and can we... If we're going to have this much of all of this and only little character, then we need to make sure that it's saying a lot more than it is. Uh, I didn't realize that was a new thing. Now, this character is getting lost. Uh, Neon is saying the same thing. So we've got to light it in a way that they are not being lost there. So, uh, yeah, I'm on the right layer. Okay. Either they need to be a lot lighter so they stand out from that dark wood behind them, or they need to be, you know, lit up from around them. Oh, no, give me that color. So that value-wise or color-wise, there is a, a difference between them and the next plane. Um, I'm thinking that they can even be much closer to the camera. Or you can go to where you don't even necessarily see them, you know, kneeling. You can just get the idea. You know, like you don't have to see their full body kneeling to know that they're kneeling. Like you can just see the ground there, then like one knee, and then we have that idea. We're then it's going to be easier to separate them from the background 
because we could have them in a totally different lighting situation than what's going on out here. Yeah, uh, you can post a link. I just have to OK it. Picture of the ref is from Ging Kong. Let's open that up and see if everybody can... Uh... Oh. oh, okay. It's a very wide image. That's beautiful. So th this is the fellow that did that image. You can see his name there if you want to go look him up. Um, yeah, that is, that's a beautiful inspiration piece and one to work towards. Okay. Thank you for finding that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go download that a bit later on my other machine. Um, so one of the things that I see as being a problem here is the values, being able to get too far away from you, and also lighting this tree. Um, on some of the other scenes, we were having leaves, and we were having vines that look really good when when backlit because light can kind of filter through them. But, oh, I'm losing chat. But we can't here. You don't have any permeable things. You don't have any translucent things for light to filter through. All you have is really thick, dense wood. So we've got to handle it in a different way and you gotta think about how the light is gonna work here because with wood, either something's lit or it's not lit and it's not gonna be really passing through it. Um, I think you need to start going in here and kind of like this, right? You're making all these scrubby shapes. It doesn't have to be super realistic. I'm like, you don't have to reference all of this, but come in here and start figuring out what all of these are, all these branches. And that's what they are. They're, these are all branches. You start making that and figure out the three-dimensional way that these all interact. And what you're gonna have is light filtering down through these things so that there is such a lattice work of them that light hits some of them, but not other ones. And that's what we're going to have is bright spots of light where it lights some of them and then the rest are in shadow but you can also have enough of the um, atmosphere dust whatever that you do have this haziness but you know take a look at that look at the way that they handled this and it's that same sort of way i wonder if we can get Actually, let's see. I always try to modify my uh, references to get closer to what I want my scene to be so that I have less guesswork. So we do this and then. Yeah, so something on that line where you've got all of these twisting limbs, I think three-dimensionally you have to go in here and do that. And that's where the strength of this image comes in is just kind of the visual coolness of all of these twisting massive root limb things coming together. And it doesn't have to be exactly like this, right? This is some place that she has created with her power and I'd still like to see her maybe a little bigger and not so dark she's really dark 
we could still get her you know bigger without losing anything and she only needs to feel shadow and dark against that light background so the area behind her can be really well lit but that doesn't mean that she needs to be necessarily black in front of it. I'm hitting that with the overlay orange. So here we go from like a really, really dark character that's pretty small to something that's a little larger. And we still get enough pop of color and enough lighter value that we can make out who she is, but she's still backlit really well and stands out. Uh, I'll be going that way. Make sure that we're not just getting into white. Uh, what we could have is, uh, let's move that out of the way. What we could have is, basically what you have over here which is the areas that are lit are proper bright right they're they're almost white if not white but that's not most area that's not the whole area in general that's just the area that light is actually hitting so a lot of this could be toned down to somewhere around this level uh, then you just see the spots of where the light is filtering through and it creates this sort of lattice pattern of light on the background as it goes around and catches some of these uh, uh, big root things and like there could be light coming down on her so that she's got the white light and I'm writing it on the top of her Oh, that's still set on. So there can be some light spilling out on that little spot. So like it still follows your same basic idea of the value scheme, but we need to get a little more variation, a little more nuanced into how it works across all of the individual uh, uh, shapes and subjects in it. And we could have some cool light down here. Like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this dark gulf here. I almost think like another color instead of black, like use the, the dark values on something else. And then down in here, maybe there's some sort of, I don't know. You've got this sort of nice purple light. You could use that. And off scene, there's there's something kind of bouncing some, some light in this other color of light there. But you could show something to break this up, just a little mossy stuff. You know, some sort of lichen. Just to keep it from being all, all orangey, brown, red, brown. Have some of that breaking up some of this. That would be nice. Or it can be some sort of uh, 
thing that grows on the side of a tree, you know, so you could have it break up some of those shapes. Give me something that's actually green. Yeah, so you could have, you know, these sorts of little things growing on it. So there's a little bit of life in here, but it's measly little life. It's like little, you know, lichen and, and uh, mushrooms and fungus kind of growing on the sides of stuff. And so, you know, maybe, maybe her little tail thing is, uh, it's got a little color in it like that. But it's not much. Most of it's all that kind of brown tones. And careful jumping to the black too quickly. Uh, we want to approach this in a fairly realistic way. So I'm kind of that direction with it. Okay. Uh, it works better with the bigger characters occupying the same space. Yeah. Uh, yes, maybe spots of light on and through the branches, roof. Yeah, and you can just totally choose those at random. I mean, try to have some idea. Like if the light's coming through here and it's hitting, you know, the top of this, then it also might be going around that and hitting this tree behind it. So what you're going to have is a lot of back and forth where you could get your lasso tool and uh, I need a new layer. There we go. I can't draw. I don't have a layer. So I'll make a lasso tool, and then I can just, boom. There, a little little light backlighting that one. And then, so I'm going to choose the space between two of them there. And I'm going to say there is some light back in there. And I would probably do it this way first instead of trying to draw it because I would have a tendency to try to overthink it. And this is a bit more random. And I would rather do it this way and then try to make sense out of it rather than overthink it. And then I can just say that maybe that's one. And or maybe there's another little light here, a spot here. A spot coming down here, one back in there. So that starts building out an idea of a three-dimensional nature to these. And that can be cool. And, and then you go in with all your little noodly uh, stuff as far as that. Yeah, that's nice to do in neon. Uh, also, I think the light the guy's holding should be a shade of green to contrast in the white light. Yeah, following along with your idea that he's bringing her some, you know, renewal seed of magic, then we need to convey that with the color as well. That if this was, I mean, the middle of the light, I don't, you know, it depends what the shape of this thing is. Uh, can be white, and that's fine, but it needs to have like this green aura around it. And that can be casting not as bright a green, but it needs to be casting some green light around it. And then on this dude, right? So he contrasts that light uh, to the rest of the image. Or his cloak could be some sort of green, like he's the, he's the green dude. And so all of this foreground area kind of has that tone, and then the background has a different tone. Uh, this also is a really big just block of and I'm thinking that we should have some some spots in here where 
we can see it's almost like a strangler tree that we're looking at earlier that there's holes in this where this has grown together and left left spots Another way you could do it is you could actually paint a really rough version in the background back here and then come back over and paint over it and have multiple layers. Like I could come in here with another one that's like a half tint. And so you start seeing several layers of this thing twisting back in there. And then the whole inner lit thing is always kind of interesting. So, yeah, pushing it that direction would be cool. I can go a little bit more in some midtones. Yeah. More like that. So, yeah, it's quite a departure uh, on some of this stuff, but I still think it works within the same framework of what you've uh, created. Um, you might want to find a pose that's not so leaning because uh, you've got this big lean here with that big lean and it just it's almost like it was overly posed like maybe if he's uh, if he actually is if, uh, he, <laughs> if he chose something that wasn't that you can actually see it. If he broke from the silhouette a little bit, I think it would be nice that if he was here and then his hand was out, that his head would break away from the silhouette instead of he fits exactly within the same curvature and shape of this thing. So she breaks from the silhouette of the tree and then it comes down and he breaks the silhouette. And it doesn't even need to be by much. I mean, it could be half that much and probably move that back. So say that we do that, say that we get that and we put him here. Then it just helps him stand out a little better because he is not only just a different color, but he has a different uh, silhouette breaking him off as well. Okay, well, I think that does it. Uh, I did get to everybody. Yes. Yeah, Veronica, no. Yep. Okay. Now, remember, guys, you've got two weeks in order to wrap up the final on this one, and then we'll do another review. Um, I anticipate there shouldn't be any reason to reschedule it, but, of course, we'll let you know, but it should be in two weeks. And I will be thinking about other options as far as what to do with the next challenge. Oh, yeah, since this is not a patron only, I will put it out on the Facebook group as a poll about what you guys want to do for the next challenge. If you have some ideas, you're welcome to toss them to me. Uh, I try to find stuff that will work for general galleries for most people. So probably not anything too specific, but... That'll do it. And Bobby, you're a little late, man, if you just came in. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that should get you guys going. And if you want to jump into the next challenge, then I should have another dozen or tickets so uh, that you can pick up that will get you entry. And that will be in about two weeks. I will let you know if I'm having a live stream next Friday or not. Uh, I have a book cover image that I am working on right now and it's on a fairly tight deadline. 
So if there is any concern that I'm not going to make it, I'm going to cut out the next next week's non-challenge live stream. But okay. I'm going to wrap it up there. If you guys want to, you know, toss me questions or get feedback from the community, make sure you go out to swatchesart.com. And that'll do it now. Let's see. OBS, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining me. Until you see you next time, keep drawing.